Um, I actually have a couple questions. I, I'm actually a minister of the Christian faith. Okay. And um, I, I just want I don't like to knock other religions or knock other beliefs until I have a complete understanding of them. Okay, good which, idea. You know, where a lot of Christians... <laughs> then it's okay to knock them? Oh, I'm sorry. I have no, to no, no, I'm just... <laughs> Go ahead. After I find... After I get the complete facts about them, then I can distinguish for myself yeah. if okay. it's true or false. That's yeah, fair enough. Of course. <clears throat> so my my questions to you are: um, Is there like, or, or was there like a driving force that that turned your attention against God, or to to make you just, you know, I mean, did you were you ever exposed to God in any way, or did you just? Oh yeah. From an early age, just okay. didn't believe he existed. Or all right, uh, I'll start off really quick. You can take mm -hmm. over. Um, I was actually brought up uh, Catholic. I went to church every week. Uh, my dad brought me. Um, although I, I must say that early on, um, I never really believed all that much. I always had questions and doubts. Um, I never saw any kind of direct proof or <laughs> evidence of God. Um, and so I always had questions and doubts. When I got to like, early college age, mm -hmm. um, I had basically decided that there there's most likely something out there because so many people in the world believe in God. Right. But I was I was pretty much convinced that you know the Christians aren't right, the Buddhists aren't right, the you know Jewish aren't right. There's something, just don't know exactly what it is. Um, and then basically, as I thought about it more, read more into ideas, and just started looking at actual science, I decided no, it's a lot of wishful thinking. Um, it's a lot of you know, it's it's a good idea. It, it's a comforting thought. Which is why it's so powerful. Uh -huh. um, but in terms of you know actual reality, uh, I, d I don't believe that there is any God or anything like that now. So, oh, Jeff, um, uh, my I was raised uh, in the Methodist Church, and my parents, after they retired from their from their legitimate careers, uh, both became Metho Methodist ministers. Mm -hmm. um, I I never felt much in the way of, of a connection to the religion, but I played along as a kid because it seemed to be the thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, once I got out of the house and was, and was free to think for myself and make my own decisions, um, it, the one thing that I struggled with was this idea that it was, uh, that it was somehow disrespectful or dangerous to question. And I, I remember very distinctly reaching the point in my life where I said, well, any god that I would be willing to worship mm -hmm. couldn't possibly have a problem with me taking a good, long, hard, careful, critical look at what I was being told mm -hmm. and, and at the evidence around me and making up my mind. And uh, boy, it was like within the next three days I was an atheist. Oh, okay. Yeah, because oh, well, there was because there was nothing, there was nothing behind it. So, so you felt no anchorage in in the religion. You felt no anchorage that there was a God anchorage. Was no I'm not even sure what you mean by that. I had I mean, no like strong sound, emotional connection it. to it. You had no sound proof. Well, no. Right. Okay. Well, um, I I don't mean to sound disrespectful in any way, but God, but <laughs> <laughs> but I I honestly think that that's speaking out of ignorance. Okay, because uh, if you read in the Bible, which is 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 about the Book of Life for Christians or anybody that okay. believes in God, yeah, there's a numer there are numerous occasions where God has allowed people to question Him. Uh huh. It's now I know oh, you. Oh sure. Know, as, oh, sure. As, no, no, no. I, no. I think you misunderstand me. I'm not saying that that. Uh, uh, that I think necessarily that the Christian religion says you shouldn't question. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. Right. But a lot of people that I knew who right. were religious had that attitude. Uh -huh. right? And I did feel personally, whether it was from the religion or not, I did feel personally like there was some, um, like there was some threat or fear or danger or something there that I had to get past. Mm -hmm. Right. Wherever that came from, I'm not going to blame Christianity for it. Right. I am just, I'm just saying. Once I did get past it, it's really obvious to me that there was no God within just a few days. Oh, okay. Well, on on that note, um, I like um, actually when I asked you, oh, had you ever been exposed to God? 
you told me that uh, both of you told me about the church that you grew up in and that you were raised in the church. Uh-huh. Uh And and all my and uh, I'm not going to say I'm a biblical scholar or anything close to it, but I have my own study. You know, I studied it to for myself. And in all my studies, I found out that going to church is not always an exposure to God. In fact, it could be a big a bigger hindrance from God than it is to an exposure because, as you know, everybody talks about it. You find most of the funniest things, most of the most critical things, okay. you know, people, most critical people. So are you going church. back to, so are you going back to the idea of a more of a personal experience? No, 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 not a, no, not a personal experience okay. because, you know, God, I'm not going to say God doesn't speak to everybody, but you have to be really blessed for something like that to happen. You know what I'm saying? I'm a minister okay. in it, and that, well, I've never had nothing. To well, okay. I mean, it head. could be. It could be that there's a God that only reveals Himself to certain blessed people. Doesn't change a thing for us. Right. Okay. As far as but, we're concerned, we look at those people and say, you know, they they're claiming these things that don't seem to have any basis in reality. We see no reason to take them seriously, so we don't. Uh, okay, but my 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 thing of it is. is the, the Bible actually says, um, it says, you know, try God. It says, it says the Bible in the actual, actual words, it says, taste and see. Okay. But the problem there is that we have no, the Bible is uh, leather bound, got some pages in it. Mm -hmm. um, there are millions of books out there mm -hmm. that have the same amount of evidence to back them up. Right. Uh -huh. um, including, you know, I mean, any fiction book that you care to pick up. We have no reason to believe that this one is any more special than any of the other books out there. So until I get some evidence saying that this God in this Bible is true and real, then I'm not going to take its claims and follow its instructions right. any more than I'm going to say that I should be jumping down rabbit holes looking uh -huh. for the Queen of Spades to, you know, bring me to a tea hearts, party. Hearts, man. It's the Queen of Hearts. Okay, sorry. Queen of oh. Hearts. No, you're oh. Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> sorry. Well, um, um, to go looking for, you know, rabbits to have dinner parties with. So, yeah, okay. Tea parties with, so. Um, so, you uh, you have to believe, well, you, I, I assume that you take the uh, the scientific route of, of, of us being in our existence and all of this, right? Try to. I mean, it depends on what you mean by the scientific route, but we we see that science has explained a lot in this world and has explained how planets got here, how life evolved, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So chances are it's a good thing to rely on to make decisions on. Okay. Um, so uh, my, my thing about it is this. Even if we take the scientific route, and we believe that, that somehow, some, well, I mean, I'm not going to knock it. Like I said, I don't like to knock okay. things. But... If there was some kind of explosion that created the planets, or yeah. some kind of the, who created it, there ultimately there's, has there's to that, be some that, creator. Like yeah. No, why? Because why? I mean, things just don't appear. Science has never what, science has never explained something just appearing from nowhere. But what about the creator himself? The creator if himself. Things don't. If things don't appear from nowhere. Where'd the creator come See, from? See, but you can't look at the, the creator as a thing because yeah. Why? the creator is obviously more yeah. than a thing. If Why? Well, maybe the universe is more than a thing. Well, maybe, I mean... If I'm the not... universe is more than a thing, then it's off the hook for having to have been created just like your God is. And so, the, and so what, you're, what you do when you bring in a God to explain it is you violate a principle called... Uh, this is a rational principle called Occam's Razor, mm -hmm. which says if, uh, that if you don't make up additional details to put into your explanation that aren't needed. Mm -hmm. And if you, once you've admitted that there can be something that doesn't have a, an origin, right, that, that didn't get created, right. once you've admitted that there can be such, such a, a something, mm -hmm. then there's no reason that the universe can't be that something. You don't have to put a god in there. Putting a god in is just an extra step that's completely unnecessary. True. True. So okay. there you go. Uh, well, this is this is my my thing about it. Is okay. Even if that that is true, then uh, I mean, where does the power? Even looking at science, science says that sleep is a stage of death. Science says that. What? What? That what? Sleep is a stage of death. It's like one of the early stages of death. When you're sleeping, that's a, that is a stage of death. It's not death. But I, I'm I'm stage. not familiar with this, and I yeah, need I, some you know some you know citation from scientific literature to um, to well, accept I mean, that. But you can uh, look at uh, okay. Um, but, but go on. Okay. 
uh, now assuming that I'm true for the conversation's sake. Sure. For the sake um, of Okay, then where does, if it's a stage of death, do you believe we have the power to, to wake from a death? Do, do you believe that we have the power to, to raise the dead by a shake? You know? Not yet, but medical science is coming along. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean, no, again, really. I mean, I, I'm, I'm very hopeful that medical science will solve this annoying uh, aging and dying problem that, that we're facing, that evolution is foisted on us. Well, I mean, okay, uh, I'm sure, you know, because most people that don't believe in God have a, a thorough knowledge of the Word, the Bible. Most of them do. I mean, because I've ran into people who don't believe in God, but they can tell me more scriptures than I know as one of his closest followers, you know, or, yeah. you know, a minister. Okay. So, um, have, if you've looked at the Word, do you read the book of Revelations, which I'm sure you probably I, get this a lot. I have read bits of the Bible, including bits of that. I, I, I will not claim to have read the whole thing straight through. It, yeah. I haven't. Well, uh, I mean, I, I, I give this to you as an assignment. You don't have to accept it, this of course. Assignment. But <laughs> I'm saying... Hold it. Me my, get my pen. <laughs> Go on. Um, the book of Revelations. Read it in its entirety. The entire book of Revelations. Yeah. Yes. And, and what do? Because um, when, when you read it, you realize that it really summarizes the modern day. Ah, can I, can uh, I, uh, prophecy. Ooh, boy, I wish I had these handy. Uh, there are some websites out there mm -hmm. that, oh, uh, boy, I don't have the URLs. Can you, if you watch the next show, I will make sure they have this information for uh -huh. you. There are websites where back around 1998, 99, when the millennium was about to happen, mm -hmm. and there were a lot of claims that the rapture was going to be upon us, Jesus was going to return, because it uh -huh. was a big, scary, round number, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. um, there were a lot of websites that, that cataloged all these claims mm -hmm. and, like, noted when the date that was predicted that, oh, it's going to be February 14th, 2000, uh -huh. is going to be the end. Uh -huh. And when that day would come, and that person who made the claim was wrong, chalk it off. Chalk it off. Well, there's one really great site that went backward. They went into historical references, mm -hmm. right? People have been predicting the end times are near. Well, since Jesus himself, who told his disciples right. that the ones standing right there were not going to be, were not going to die before it was all finished. Okay. Before he was, what was all finished. Oh, the world? D don't ask me to quote it exactly. Yeah, it, it's it, you will not taste death before the, the kingdom coming, arrives. Yeah. I it, something something like that. It's it's pretty clear to us. You guys can spin it however you like. It's pretty clear to us. Jesus thought the world was going to end within the lifetimes of the disciples. Oh. But but even setting aside Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Going in in the like in the year 120, there were people predicting it was the end. Right mm -hmm. in the year when the year one thousand was rolling around, there were people predicting that was going to be the end. All through history, people have looked at the Book of Revelations in particular and said, "Ooh, this vague thing that it says here in the Book of Revelations, this is hinting at, this is showing, this is just like the thing that's happening now." Yeah. Uh, okay, and they've been wrong, 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 wrong for two thousand years. You say the vague; it actually gets very detailed. No, no, no. I, I know enough about the claims in the Book of Revelation. Yeah, we've we've seen you know a big what about the like four-headed dragon thing in there? I mean, there, uh -huh. th there's, well, what about the four-headed dragon? Uh, I don't understand what you want to know about it. Where is, is there going to be a four-headed dragon, or is that a metaphor for something? If it's a metaphor for something, there's not literally going to be a four-headed dragon, you know bashing its way through cities like Godzilla through Tokyo, if there's not really going to be a four-headed dragon, then it's a metaphor, and that means it's vague. It means it's subject to interpretation. Right, but right? Uh, actually, yes, but there And is. that's the kind of stuff that all through history people have been reading but, in the Book of Revelations. But that's and, not a metaphor. And leaping to, it's not a metaphor. Okay, so there's actually it? going to be a scaly four-headed dragon that can, you know, tromp around. Uh, I, I mean, as my personal, you ask me as a person, and my sure. personal belief is yeah, that if yeah. the word says it, it will happen. Oh, wow, because no, wow. that's going to be cool. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to that. No, no, but this is the thing. This is, I why, this is, why, I that. That, this is why I say that that's a metaphor. That's not a metaphor. That, okay. That's okay. <laughs> All right, man. When? when? 
I, plan? I mean, I don't In the know next that. how many years? I don't know that. I'm, I'm not a prophet. I know. Well, hold on. You th you're, you're saying the book of Revelations is showing that, yeah. that it talks about the current times, what, in, within a hundred years? But the thing about it is, is the Bible, also tells, us that the Bible yeah. also tells us that even, it says, my logic is not your logic. My ways are not your ways. In fact, they're much higher than your ways. I'm paraphrasing, but that's I'm not buying word. that. Yeah. I'm not so, buying that if it doesn't no, no. make so sense. Even if I sense. were to give you a prediction, that would be yeah. from my mind. And sure, my mind but I'm not asking for a day. Yeah, I'm not and and asking for a day. You know what? Here's how. And we're giving phrase, you a little leeway here. Let me phrase the question this way, right? Mm -hmm. You have you got to have some idea for yourself, right? If the Book of Revelations is talking about our times now, right? Mm -hmm. You've got to have some idea in your head. Boy, you know, this must mean that it's all gonna, you know, that 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 Jesus is gonna return within. X amount lifetime. of time, no, right? No, no. Whether it's ten years, a hundred years, there's got to be some number. No, I, I, I honestly don't have a number in my head. Well, then why are you bringing up the Book of Revelations if you don't think it's likely that it's going to occur I, I even never said within a hundred years? Was unlikely. I just said I don't. Do have you think a it number. is likely that it'll happen within a hundred years? I, I'm not saying. I'm, I'm not going to take a stand on that point. On that. The See, number. that's a thing. That's a thing. Because that's another th uh, thing that I learned reading these historical accounts of claims of the of the end times that failed. Mm -hmm. The people that claimed the end times were upon us when the date that they claimed it was going to happen passed. They never give up the religion. Never, never, never. They never take a good hard look at themselves in the mirror and said and say, "I've been an idiot." I've been believing this stuff that it was all going to happen real soon, and then when it didn't happen real soon, you know, I just kept so, on believing. So wait a minute, you believe there's no natural. You believe that there there's no supernatural being. Right. You we we do I, not believe that there are any. Now, super I'm going out on a limb. Okay. I believe okay. there's no supernatural beings. Okay. You believe? Okay. Anything you can show me actually exists. I'm going to say it's natural. I mean, okay. Well. Uh, my thing about it is this. If there's no supernatural being, yeah. in which I'm sure you get this argument all the time, but okay. if there's nothing after in the afterlife, if there's nothing there... If we just die. Right. Yeah. Why not? I mean, because you're taking a gamble. Whether you think why? it's a gamble or not. Oh, um, you're, you're, taking talking a about, Pascal. you're talking about Pascal's wager. Are you familiar with that term? Uh, no, sir. Okay. The idea that Pascal was a mathematician... Mm -hmm. and Christian, who came up with a, a relatively famous argument in favor of Christianity called Pascal's Wager. Mm -hmm. He basically graphs out, right, there's two possibilities. There is a God or there right. isn't a God. Mm -hmm. And then there's two choices. You believe in him or you don't believe in him. Mm -hmm. And he showed that mathematically you're better off going ahead and believing that there is one, hoping for the big prize of eternal life, right? Mm -hmm. The problem is Pascal's wager doesn't work because there's thousands of different gods that people have claimed over the course of human history. Mm -hmm. There's no particular reason to assume that the only one you got to think about is the Christian God. No reason at all. So uh, even look, if... Uh, even, wait, not to cut you off, I'm sorry, but... Yeah. Um, on what you just said, that all the guys that all the other guys that exist, well, no, that people have claimed. Right, right. That you say uh, that people claim to have existed uh -huh. or or do yeah. exist. Yeah. Okay, if you take up that belief and or, or you take it up and say I'm going to wager, so I'm going to do Pascal's wager, as you said, yeah. you know, and uh, I'm going to take one. Yeah. Now you have to go into a field as a human mind. We have to know. You know what I'm saying? We have to see before we believe. We have to, you know, get a mental logic before we ever just go out on a limit. But, you know, I wish that was true, but clearly, since, like, over a third of the Earth's population believes in Christianity, mm -hmm. clearly mo a vast majority of people are able to go ahead and believe without any evidence at all. Well, I mean, that's true. I'm sure. That, so, that's true. But, you know, I, I, I wish that we were all really rational and careful I'm saying, about what but, we okay, believe. Okay, but, but looking at you now, I wish look, looking at you uh, as, as a person, I, right. I can understand that you like knowledge, you know what I'm saying? That you like... I'm you don't that you, like knowledge? No, no, I mean that, that you like... <laughs> why, are we have, talk, why are we limiting this to me? Do you like knowledge or don't you? Yeah, I like knowledge. Okay. See, but I, I mean, I can't do no... It is better to actually believe okay. than to just Okay, well, guess. looking at me, looking at me. All right. 
okay, if, if I'm going to do this, if I was in your position, you know, yeah. I was an atheist yeah. and I don't believe in God, but okay. I'm going to do Pascal's wager and I'm going to take up one. I'm going to go <laughs> research all of the gods. And if you yeah. research all of them and look at all of their books, the Quran, the Bible, and all of them, yeah. you'll find out that the only one even close to our logic, you know, close to making sense to us, is the God that I serve. God. <laughs> No, and, and so seriously, saying, because uh, all the, know, all, all the uh, other didn't ones. Didn't you start I mean, this by saying you're a you're a minister? Huh? Didn't you start this by saying you're a minister? Or is that the last caller? No. Are you a no, minister? I'm, I'm a minister. You're okay. a minister. Okay. Isn't that your job to say stuff like that? No, I'm no, not taking no. your word for it. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. The research. If you yeah. actually go in and research, yeah, like you know, Buddha. Buddha was. A, a, I Buddha mean, makes way more sense to me than Christianity. Really? Buddhism makes Explain. way, way more sense. Explain. Buddha was a guy sitting under a tree. Uh -huh. He said he thought carefully about stuff. Uh -huh. Right. It was not. Um, it was not a guy who claimed to be the son of God. He was a guy. Now I know that human beings exist. I don't know that any sons of gods exist. So right there off the bat, I'm way more likely to believe that there even was a Buddha in See, the but, first dude, place I mean, than I okay. am likely to believe that there was a Jesus. Uh, I mean, oh, it, of, of course Buddha existed. We, I mean, according to history, he existed. But they, they reverence him as a god. Actually, you, uh, no, some, they some, don't. Well, I, I've done a little bit of research on this. Some Buddhists do something like that, yeah. Okay. But so. a lot of them don't. And his original, his original teachings were nothing like that. Uh, oh. His original teachings, he was just a guy with some advice. Okay, well, looking at... Well, then, really, then, once you take that angle, the only God that exists is this one, because we call no, him no, God, no, no, no. Look, Muslims no, no. call him Allah, which is... No, is, no, no, I'm not buying yeah. that either. <laughs> um, it's, it's certainly true that, that there are historical branchings between Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, right? Mm -hmm. But not between Christianity and the worship of the Norse gods, the Norse pantheon of, Odin. of Odin, Thor, and and those guys. And there are still worshippers of those guys if you go to Scandinavia, and probably here in the U.S. too. I'm sure you can find some, but they exist. There are people who still believe that stuff. Just because they're, you know, I think that this is an unfair argument that Christians make a lot. They, they make this, this argument, oh, only Christianity makes the most sense. You know, it's easy to say something like that when you're in our culture, where your religion that you're talking about and claiming that's the only one that makes sense is the most common religion in our culture, and everybody's used to it. You know, in countries where they believe that the God is this, like, dog-headed jackal man, I'm making this up. I don't know there's hey. any such place. But there's places out there with gods that are Ancient wacky, Egypt. right? Weird, wacky gods like that. You know, those gods make more sense to those people than your god does to them. Why? Not because your god, because their god really makes more sense, or your god really makes less sense, because they're more used to it. That's from the culture they grew up in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and in our culture, we're used to hearing about Jesus. True. But there's a lot of wacky stuff in the Bible. That's, you know, there's, 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 um, you know, talking snakes and all this other stuff. You're telling me there's going to be a four-headed dragon rampaging around no, no, the world? No, 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 I did not say that. Was that the last guy? I'm sorry. No, that, that was me. I said that, 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 that a four-headed You're saying it's not a metaphor. Like literal dragon. Liter there's literally going to be a four-headed dragon. Isn't that what you said? It's not a dragon, a beast. Okay, beast, oh. a four-headed beast. You're telling me there's literally going to be a four-headed beast rampaging around. Okay, like, now, you know, now if you want to go back to something like that, again, look at herpetology today. <laughs> Multicephalism is very, very common in reptiles. Having a two-headed snake, oh, I'm sure that's pretty common. Means. So if you just want to go down to a four-headed <laughs> snake, there have probably been them out there for the last five million you years. You know what else? I've heard the argument that only Christianity can be a source of like morality and rules of right and wrong, or that, that only true. Christianity can, can make people happy. Not true. Okay, good. I'm okay, glad that good, I'm glad you don't take because that, that strikes me as the same kind of argument. It's like everybody's used to Christianity, so it seems more natural when you come to people in our culture and say things like that about Christianity. See, it seems like, well, yeah, you know, but that boy, that whole Allah thing seems really out there. But that's only because I wasn't raised in Arabia. No, no, actually, Allah is God. Okay, well, that, well, that, okay, fine. Well, that, that, I set that aside, some, the, you know. the jackal-headed creature thing that they have in some little country. I mean, I've never, I have no experience with that. I've got no familiarity with that. So if you toss, you know, the 
Christian God and that God in front of me, one of them is going to seem more um, understandable. Okay. But only because see, of the culture. See, That's not but, because the I mean, arguments for him make any more you're sense. You're obviously not biased to the to the to our surroundings. You're obviously not biased to them. They don't matter to you. Well, if huh? we we try. No, not because to I'm be saying biased, if but. if Christianity is more comfortable to us to believe, or that it's just a religion that a lot of us just like to take because it's normal. Yeah. And you're not Christian. Obviously, you're not affected. Oh, by no, I am. Oh, no, sure, I am. No, I but mean I'll... it doesn't affect you to the point where you feel like you have to believe it. Yeah. The only difference is I've recognized it for what it is. Okay. Now, this is why I say this, because of your arguments, and, 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 and you know what I'm saying, I really enjoy talking this, but I'm going to end the conversation okay. like this. Yeah, I think Ashley would probably like his show back, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, um, I actually, I encourage you uh -huh. to, um, if you're going to do shows like this, and you're going to, you know, promote atheism and, and things like this, and try to reach people and, and show them in your, in your perspective, what Christianity really is, or what you know, believing in supernatural being really is. If you're going to expose it for what it is, I encourage you to do it out of knowledge. I encourage you to get a full understanding of it before you do. What do you think? That we don't Bible understand? that you have on your desk, I encourage you to actually read it oh, a lot. You know, but not, not. I mean, I'm okay. not saying like you don't read. It. I'm just saying I encourage yeah. you to 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 you know what I'm saying to okay. look at it. Yeah. And, and its entirety, and like actually try to understand it. You know what I'm saying? Even okay, if, yeah. But and, can, see, but because when you do that, you know what I'm saying? That's like a history teacher teaching. Yeah, off but, of, but off hold on. He reads the history on. book every But once hold on. You know what it would prove if I came back on the show next month? Because I'm only on once a month. If I came back on the show next month and said, I read this book. I sat down. I read it all the way through between then and now, and I've decided now I believe in the Christian God. You know what that would mean? In a in in an ultimate sense of like proving anything, <laughs> it would mean nothing, not anything. Uh -huh. Just because a, just because somebody reads a book and then they believe something different See, doesn't prove See, anything. I, you know I what? Mean, proves I, stuff? But I'm not saying, I'm not Pro pushing Christianity on you. Is what I'm saying. I'm not for I'm not going to try and make you be a Christian you know then, then, or try then, to force you to look at Christianity differently. Well, then what's the point I, of reading it? Yeah, no, what was, because what was I the want, point of this going, exercise? If you're going, like I said earlier, I don't knock things until I have a full understanding okay. of them. I have so a full understanding of Christianity, Christianity sir. Okay. I, sir, I, I have you know, a full understanding of Christianity. I was raised a Christian. Yeah. I spent. I, I mean, the, I didn't no, no, become no, no. an atheist until I was twenty-three. In the Bible, I was well an adult. In the Bible, you and understood you what you it was I was being asked to understand. Of, yes, I we, have a full understanding. No, no, no. Of because you were raised in the church doesn't give I you a have full a, no, understanding. No, 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 no. There is a lot more to it. We have been reading about Does this it, stuff for years. Did it ever occur to you, sir, that somebody could understand your religion and still not buy it? True. True. I but, understand but religion, saying, though, and I don't buy it. Occurring. Yes. And I find it insulting that you're. That, and I do find it insulting that you I'm think you think that the only reason I don't agree to be a Christian is because I haven't read your holy book enough. See, no, no, but you're not understanding what I'm saying. That is not. That yes, has nothing I know. To do with what what, I what his what your point is, and let me just rephrase here, just to make sure I'm, I'm right here is if we're going to be on TV saying that Christianity is wrong and, you know, it's got bad things in it, we should read the Bible to at least know the positions. Is that correct? Come again? <laughs> okay. <laughs> if we're going to be on TV saying Christianity is wrong, we should read the Bible to at least know the positions. Right. Okay. The point there is there are other ways to understand the positions than simply reading the Bible. The Bible is a very convoluted way to get to it. Now, reading it is important. I will grant you that. Actually, going back to it and you know looking at certain points of it, very helpful, very useful, no doubt about it. However, there's a lot of other problems with it which don't go, which aren't directly, you know, it's not in John's 3:29 or something like that. That point is bad or something like that. It's that the the whole underpinnings that there is some omniscient, you know, universe-creating deity out there who created man, got all pissed off at us for whatever reason, sent his son down, made us kill his son so that he could then forgive us for doing the bad things which he knew we were going to do in the first place. Yeah, that there, makes there, no sense. There are simply logical and philosophical See, and moral the, problems the, the, with the this. Logic, the, the thing that you're not understanding is, is according to my belief. God, 
his thoughts are higher than, because it makes no sense to so, you doesn't so, mean it didn't make sense. So then no, basically no, we no, have I no way of comprehending it. it. So no, no. Okay. I object to the very to the very concept that we have to set aside logic, logic as we understand it. Mm -hmm. Because you claim, you and people like you, claim that there's some better logic that's beyond us. And that makes it true even if it makes no sense to us. That's, I can't believe so, you have so, the audacity to make a claim like that. How dare you tell human yeah. beings to believe your religion because there's some other better logic that they can't grasp. How Un dare you? Until you can How dare you trick and lie to people like that? Until you can present That's disgusting. Until you can present some other form of logic and some better ways of looking at the world and some better ideas of working with facts, then we have no reason to believe. We have tools of logic and morality and all that kind of stuff to go along with it that make a lot of really good sense. Until we have until someone else presents a different way of looking at it that works better, other than just saying, it works better, trust me, we're going to stick with what we got. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I understand. Point it. Out, oh, by but, the way, but, if there's this higher logic that's beyond us, it's beyond you too, right? Right. Well, if it's beyond you too, how do you even know that it exists? See, because how I have a thing know? called faith. Ah, faith. That's that just going ahead and believing even though it makes no sense, right? But, but you're not understanding. I did not. No, I completely you. understand no, faith. No, you're not. Faith is believing even though it doesn't really make any sense. That's in your perspective. Lack not, of evidence. No, what per and, okay. and now Define we're back to this special us. logic, this special no. secret logic that okay. we can't personally what experience. What is your idea of faith? It either then? makes sense or it doesn't, sir. Yeah. What yeah. is your idea of faith then? If it's not just believing, you know, despite lack of evidence, what is your definition of faith, I guess? My definition of faith is, is well, the, according to the Bible, faith is evidence. No, no. faith is not evidence. No. Now, the Bible may say that. Faith yep. is not evidence. Just believing isn't evidence yep. of we, anything. Evidence well, I mean, is something... Okay, because I like can, this, show you, like I can introduce you to a man down at the sanitarium who believes he is Napoleon, and he's not Napoleon. Believing doesn't make it so. Okay, but uh, so if that's what faith is, well, you're very deluded. Okay, I mean this is this is what I'm. Gonna this say. this is we're at the core of the issue here now, right? This is the core of the issue. This is what is wrong and sick and twisted about religion in general and in our society, Christianity in particular. Okay. This whole idea that we should that that if you can get yourself to believe, that's proof that it's true. That's true. nonsense. Just because you can get yourself to believe something doesn't prove a thing. You know what proves things? Actual evidence. Evidence you can look at, show to others, interpret, uh, test, and show that it comes out the same way next time. What science does, that's evidence and proof. Faith is nothing like that. Faith is just believing because you decided you're gonna. Right. I made the decision. And yeah. And yeah. Whoever and that's fine. Else. You, of course, have a complete freedom to believe whatever you want. Right, and, and I so support you're that. saying that it's sick and twisted that I don't I, th know. I think it's sick and twisted that you're in the business of telling other people to do the same. I think that's sick and twisted. But why? They have because No, no, because wait. According to you, remember, we're all these, these smart people, and we all have logic. So yeah, and if your they job, think what the logic is, they'll is come up with the reason your that job, it's not worth believing in. So why can't I talk about it? Yeah. Your job as a minister is to no, get no, people... No, see, you're speaking out of ignorance, I know. Because your job as a minister is to get the, people the to set minister. aside their logic, like you have told us to do, to set aside their grasp of reality and no, believe no, no. what I you tell you them. So you because... could get a grasp of it. You no, it, no, 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 no. See, no. because if I stood here and I told you to do 30 things, and you know, if I, and I, I said I was Catholic, and I told you to say 40 rosemaries and, and you're forgiven, that would be pushing. I said to read for yourself and get an understanding so that you can distinguish we, whether it's worth you. your time yep. or not. And we, we explained have. to you that no, there you is have. enough you stuff. Haven't... There is, we explained to you there is enough stuff about Christianity to show us that, to show any no, no, rational see, person, no. to show any rational person that it's a load of nonsense, even, no, uh, even uh, okay, without this, reading the Bible. Again, going off of what you said, this is why I said to read the Bible. Because going off of what you said, yeah. if I ever have an issue with anything, the yeah. first thing I want to do is go to the core of the issue. 
If you're finding out things about Christianity, the first thing you should do is go to the core of Christianity. Go to the Bible. Yeah. Get we, a full understanding of the, the, the root of Christianity. Yeah. Get a full understanding of what we understand. Uh, most I, most I, of I us know by I what, you, what's I happening Christianity. and surrounding yeah. Christianity. And I because told there's always you that I understand Christianity. Yeah. And if you're going to come back to me yeah. and tell me I don't, that I must not understand it because yeah. I don't agree with you, yeah. then I'm going to tell you you're being insulting. We have bred I, and studied... I was a Christian studied, long enough to understand yeah. what it was I was being taught. Exactly. Uh, no, no, no. We, we understand the culture, we understand the, the beliefs and the ideas and, you know, how things work in, in the Christian worldview and, and, and the stories behind it and stuff like that. We understand all of that. And my, po my point and, is, my, and, and my, objection, my objection to what you do, sir, for a living, is that it is your job to get people to set aside their own grasp of reality. You think it's limited, right? You think there's something better. I don't. I think that a person's understanding of reality is as good as it's going to get. So and if, you're if, if that's as good as it's going to get, then why does it differ aside. so much? I, I, you're asking them to set that aside and believe what your religion teaches, not because I'm of anything you can actually explain. See. The Bible says taste uh, now, and now see. Now, I, I, I do want to get this point because out. you don't believe in God. You don't believe in God. And because you don't, if you taste and see, See, because the only thing that can come of that, of you tasting and seeing, if you don't believe in God, is a new level. It's something God proving to you that I exist. That's the only thing that can come of that. I think I if explained you earlier if you that if I had a mystical experience, my first reaction would be that I was... No, I didn't say mystical experience. I said that. God it proving that he exists. God can do that in more ways than appearing. No, sorry, not to me. I happen I'm, to know that the way you prove something is by actually, you know, demonstrating that it exists. Not by innuendo, not by hints, certainly not by setting aside your own okay, reasoning well, look faculties. At this. Look at this. This is wow, why I say there's every a logic time that I try we to don't make understand. That point. You okay. cut me off every time I try to make that point. Okay, uh, could go, you please let again. me make my point say it again. now? Your job as a minister is to get people to set aside their own grasp of reality and believe what your religion teaches, not because of anything you can really explain, but because of faith. Because you tell them if they can just convince themselves that it's true, then that's proof that it's true. And I think that's, I think that's I, terrible. I didn't tell them anything. I think that that's is a the, terrible thing to do for a living. Oh, I mean, that, that's the first, this is my thing. Okay, if, if reality is reality, right? If your mind grasps it as reality, it's reality, right? If you look at something, no, no, no actually, like that no. that your Ask arms that guy are, are, down in the sanitarium. He no, no. thinks he's Napoleon. Is he? He, no, he, he, he but that's his reality. Himself, if he, he thinks it's in his reality, as Napoleon. To him. is he Napoleon? Not, not to us, but to him, he's Napoleon. And, well, that, that and that's nothing. reality, then? No, that's I'm sorry. reality. The reality him. is, see, he's but a you guy to accept a different reality. Yeah. No, yeah. if, no, no, sorry. No, people okay, sorry. Get a yeah. There is, okay. there is look one look reality where stuff actually okay. happens. Okay, we're we're gonna go on. <laughs> gonna go on to the next wow. call. We thank you for calling, but in our eyes, reality is something objective and outside of your own brain. Well, and so what I see is reality, what you see is reality, and what the guy in the sanitarium sees is reality. While they may be, di you may be seeing different things. There is an objective one out there. Yeah, reality and is that we does like the not objective change one. regardless of what your opinion of it is. Exactly, that's what reality is. So okay, so well, thank, I, listen. I, I just hope that you guys are right because if you're not, you're going to face a punishment. <laughs> okay, punishment. No, let's let's not part, even and, and go there. Leave let's with, and leave with the yeah. with the, the threat threats. of yeah. eternal torment. No, no, I didn't say that. Thanks. No, well, I, thanks I, I said a lot. That, I well, said of course that, you did. Listen, hang on. TV at atheist-community.org. If you got more points, send them there. We'll respond to them online. Not We're going to get on and take the calls. Not okay, only so. do you have to set aside Thanks your for own reasoning faculties, but bye. Not only do you have to set aside your own reasoning faculties and believe something he can't prove just because if he can convince you that if you can convince yourself that it's true, it must be. Not only that, but if you don't, then yeah. you get to be tortured Burned for eternity. <laughs> yep. There's the kicker. Okay. Now can I have my pen back? Yeah. <laughs> and we're getting and, you the decaf next and week. And the show. Um, Last week, um, in case you forgot about it or weren't here, we had a nice long call um, from a minister and uh, had some information on that. Uh, it, it was a nice long call. Jeff um, took him on and basically hogtied him. Um, <laughs> the two things that we had, though, one was uh, he was bringing up that revelations. It shows that there are so many things that are going on right now that ties up you can match them all to what's going on today, and and it's and the and um, 
Revelations is, is not filled with metaphors. It's, it's, it says it explicitly, what's going to happen. Um, two things. One, there is a website, A Brief History of the Apocalypse. Um, people have been reading over Revelations and other means of trying to figure out the end times for centuries <coughs> now. And uh, A Brief History of the Apocalypse uh, goes over some of those. It's, uh, like I say, it's called A Brief History of the Apocalypse. The website is just uh, the first letter of that, A-B-H-O-T-A dot info. Brief History of the Apocalypse dot info. Um, and the first one, and it's got hundreds on the site, but the first one starts at around 280 B.C. was the predicted time that the world was going to go poof. Um, and then it's got another one for 634 B.C., 389 B.C., the first century, second century. And uh, it goes all the way up until today, and including some that are supposedly happening soon, and um, some that are happening in the future. So now soon means pretty much anything, whatever they say. Somebody said it was soon, and that was in the 1950s. So take whatever you want for a de definition of that. Uh, also, again, the, he was saying that uh, revelation should be taken literally. It's not a metaphor. It's not, uh, you know, uh, anything like that. If it says it, that's what's going to happen. So, and we we're talking about the four-headed beast that was going to come back and rampage cities. Well, it isn't four. It's actually seven-headed beast. So, um, so our caller, again, who was a minister, could have been brushed up on that a little better. But we, we missed that also. So. so anyway, keep your eyes peeled on CNN for the seven-headed beast, which will be rampaging around somewhere soon.